Good afternoon. Um, my name is Jamie Fang. At, we're at Norman's Orchids, Orchids.com. It's um interesting Saturday. We got shaken up at 11.39, was it? 11.39 today um, with a 4.8, I believe. And when that happened, you know, I'm on the, I'm living in the zero floor in our condominium. So, you know, I got six floors above me. Anyway, so I just woke up and kind of worked and kind of try to figure out if it's should I get up is there gonna be aftershock but everything was okay I went back to sleep anyways um, Norma just gave me a very challenging Atlantis spike normally we would actually divide it already but since it's in flower we're gonna to attempt to spike it and then wait till the flower is gone and then we'll repot it which is a good clearing cut right here is for another plant um, let's backtrack in. This is Jamie Fang, the youngest of the Fangs. Um, we're on our podcast. We also have it on YouTube under Norman's Orchids. So anybody outside of the U.S. because we only take the U.S. Um, people only for this page. So anybody outside the page, uh, U.S. you'd like to share our group to and have them join our YouTube under Norman's Orchids. Jeff, I ask you this every time. Anyway, so what are we going to do with that? Uh, if I don't have flowers on it, it was whack, and I chopped it. We're, we're already doing our division. Um, again, when we do our division, when I chop it, we don't repot right away. We'll let it sit for a day or two and let the wound heal. Then so we repot it so we don't have any uh, worry about rotting. So this will be quite interesting. Again, when you spike, the flower's got to be away from you. I got a lazy Susan here. And we have Hannibal. Hannibal is being really good because I put her up so she can't be hopping around. So since this is not sturdy, so I'm just going to go ahead and prop myself up first before I can show you guys. And the bamboo broke. Perfect. Here we go. So I'm just going to do my first anchor and get it going. I think this is going to have a hard time seeing it. really need another ham, but that's all right. I'll just do the first anchor. Let's just see if I'll just tie this one down. Let's just kind of stationize it for a little bit. Again, I'm using these custom um, wire that I made for the shop years ago. And I really love this and you get to cut whatever size you need and not waste anything. And again, you get to recycle these twist tie. You don't want to throw them off every time. You want a hand? Huh? You want a hand? No. You need more fingers? Okay. No. Because you have to learn to do this by yourself too. Uh -huh. You're, you're not going to call your neighbor, I don't think. Um, so with this one, since it's way out here, I'm not going to be able to do, I don't want any more bamboo to crisscross and all I'm going to see is bamboo. Cut a real t a long piece of wire, twist it, then I'm going to just tie it into my bamboo. So basically I just have a little hole in hand, so to speak. Then I don't have to have three different bamboo. See that? And it's got some flexibility. So when this fades, whack, I'm gonna chop it. We're gonna have another separation of a plant. Okay, that's how we're gonna just get that done for the first one. So every, every spiking is gonna be challenging. Every plant is gonna be different. So of course you always wanna clean these up. These shears has been torched, abused, and everything ready to go. And we're not cutting anything today, so we'll just, I'm going to use the same one to cut the bamboo. All right, right. How's everybody doing? Do we have anybody on? Quite a few people. So we could actually spike this up too, if we want to, because this plant seems to be a little shy. So if we're looking at it, you can't really enjoy the flower. So I'm trying to figure out if I want to do this to see if we want to spike it up. 
and keep in mind I don't really think about this until I get the plan in my hand. I'm gonna try to do it with my wire. I'm gonna try to make a loop first. See that? But when you do your twirl, you gotta be careful to hold your hold your um, flowers down. Because remember, these are all pretty brittle. It's just freshly open. And you're just going to twirl like a, how I twirl the Faley spike. Can you see, Roger? Is that okay? Because I can't really get in there to turn it for you guys. So you already got the wire so going on. And it's hiding behind the flower. So I don't... Again, everything is like you don't want to see too much. I think I might have snapped it. I did snap it. But what, and there's another good thing to do. I snapped it, right? Do I have any tape? You just snap this flower, like I said, you know, and this wire is a little bit thick, but I just snapped it. It's, it's still savable. This is fresh snap. Grab this handy dandy tape. If you have floral tape at home, it's even better. What I do is taped it because it hasn't really snapped, completely snapped off yet. But floral tape works better. So you kind of just tape it. And if it's really broken, then just put it in a vase and call it a day. The problem is if I had another bamboo, then I get a better support, right? So yeah, this one was not done on purpose. So I didn't really snap it on purpose. It just happened. I'm going to try to salvage it. It didn't completely come off. So it was good to just floral tape it. The flowers will still last. I have allergy today. I should know not to do this when I'm not 100% with it. Right, right? It's actually very scented, this one. So, is this better? You can see it better. Is it facing you? So, I'm going to attempt to wire this again. So today is my very first boo-boo. I um, snap off the flower, but not completely first off. First one this year though, isn't it, Jamie? So, it's so not um, no, because I did it on purpose. So I could show you how to salvage it. <laughs> you know, one a year, you know, it happens. <laughs> it's been a while since I broke anything. But yeah, we didn't completely break it. If you have floral wires, even better. If not, the tape works. Um, the flowers will still last. This is better. Yeah. So now instead of two shy flower, we have two perfectly perky flower. And the plant itself is saved. Until the flower fades, then we're gonna do a division right here. Cut right down. The pretty when you do division, the plant pretty much tell you where they, they want to be divided anyways. Um, especially when you bare root it. It's the cut is like right there. Cut me here. Um, I always like to make sure my plants are clean and then if you really want to clean it then you clean all the sheets off, you know. But I will do that as soon as we divide so I'm not going to spend any time doing that now. My voice is really deep today, this must be the allergy. If I take any more drugs I'll be sleeping here. Okay, so usually we just tie everything together, especially when I'm doing arrangement, everything, the presentation is everything. So we have went from one plant ready to fall off to flowers that was fading. Um, it was fading because it was never propped up. It wasn't fading because it's old. It was just fading. It was a heavy. I should be droopy is right, the right word. So we have just cleaned up a catalea. We have almost snapped off a flower, but we salvage it by taping it because it's not completely broken. We taped it, so they're still going to get the water source. Um, now it's happy. Any questions? The director and Roger are giving me the thumbs up. So here we are. We so have. So Catherine is asking, when you do the division, will the older division plant flower? Um, the older one will give you new growth. The older plant will not give you flowers. And the Catalea is not like a dendrobium. The dendrobium will flower out of old stock. Um, so that's why you never cut any stock off on the dendro, 
syndrome here. I cat in with it. The, the cat layer, the old stock is actually stored the energy for you for, for new plants. So, but the flower will never come out of the old stock. It'll come out of the new one. So the old one eventually hopefully will give you new plants as well. Or if you don't want to divide this, just move it into a bigger plant. But I was having a problem with this one wobbly already kind of breaking off. So the chances of me moving into a bigger pot is more slim. Because this plant was hanging on with dear life. Norma said, here, go give her a challenge today. <laughs> Don't make it too easy for her. You know, it was already falling off. And it's almost like the flower itself, it was kind of dangling. So the ch I could move it up to a big, something bigger because we have enough root system. But I don't see the point. Just cut it. And the old one, hopefully, will just keep growing new growth. Is that an answer, Kath? Is it Catherine's? How's everybody liking my jumpers? It's a lot to look at. I can't help it. There's so many beautiful stuff here. I mean, my office is now up to 50 plants. You should smell the, the aroma when I walked in in the morning. Oh my God. I wish I could bottle that. Okay, Brian was trying to spike this and I said, Come, let me borrow this, you know? That's what this fragrance is. So we've been spiking a lot of, this one has a bamboo on it already. And today I really focus on teaching you how to wire um, with bamboo. Because we've been doing the short version of the Phalaenopsis, but eventually there's going to be the tall raider and tall dendrobium and tall zygo. So that would need the um, bamboo. So we have the bamboo already cut to size. So I'm just going to cut one to show you. I don't even have the right tool. So when you cut a bamboo, there's gonna be a hole right there. Right? Okay, grab in the, the in the center of the pole and in the, in the bamboo, there's gonna be a hole right there. This is great. Um, we're gonna use that. This one now you gotta gauge the um, the spike and what you're doing. Uh, the wire, we only sell one size of wire. If the wire are not thick enough double up just do two wires because you're never gonna have the right size of everything at home you can't shave it thinner but yet you could have you could double up two thank you Ryan so this one I fortunately I have the, the right size so I already have that hole and the bamboo I'm gonna poke it in a lot of time you're not gonna have a hole then flip the bamboo to the other side and cut it or just cut it in the middle of this just tell you find it and then you're gonna stick this in there and then you're gonna twirl. And when you twirl, you gotta hold your stem. Don't think that you're gonna be able to twirl and then bam, you know, this will be another spike and this one's gonna hurt, you know, not like the one cat lay This one, when the spike is gone, you're gonna go, oh my God, I hate Jamie. Why did she show me this? I was doing just fine. Right? And this one, I'm not even gonna twirl to make a loop. Oops. I didn't do it perfect. You know how I am about perfect. So, I'm not going to be able to do my loop because I really don't, when they're this fresh then, when I do a loop sometime, I kind of choke it a little bit and I try not to do this. So I cut a little piece of wire and I'm just going to fold it. And you see we have a lot of sap, this clear sap. That's a lot of sap. Um, Norman and I taste it. It actually tastes really good, but we're like, trying to remember there's probably pesticide on it, so don't try to do that. And we're like, oh, this is better than honey. So there's sap on it. So you want to kind of clean it off a little bit. It doesn't bother, but eventually, if you have aphids, if you have any bugs, they're gonna go to it, you know, it's because it's sweet. You know, like I said, Norman and I taste it, it's great. So I don't have any spray bottle here, but I bought some Q-tip. Um, and I wet my Q-tip. Oh, I, Jeff is like, look behind you. I wet my Q-tip and I would just wipe it off. But we know how to wash. But if you don't know how to wash, you're gonna end up washing all of the pollen cap off. So this was easy, the sap I could see. So we just kind of quickly went over and wash it. 
And then when it's just on the spike, you could just do a wet napkin and just kind of go through it. And there, I think people were having a problem with the black, and that's not disease. It's just mold and humidity in the back greenhouse. You could just wash it off. Danny, what you spray? Just, just water. Yeah. Sometimes we'll do a little bit of. Thank you. I already brushed my teeth. <laughs> Sometimes we do a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of fire sand, whatever you have. But I'm kind of lazy at home. I just grab water. Um, but now I do a little bit of alcohol if I have that She's AFib lazy. problem. I'm lazy. I've been having a lot of phone issues this week. It's not a good week. Too many board meetings, too many phone issues. So here we go. Brian just sh sh sent me a toothbrush. So when you have the black mold, don't go using toothpicks or toothpaste or anything. Hey, Gia. Watch this, this dog and then go crazy. There's Gia. Okay, just don't talk to her with excitement. She'll calm. There, there's Gia. There's Auntie Gia. So just kind of brush out the black mold. Okay? It's not a disease. It's not anything. Don't get excited. And there we go. Now with the wire, I could move it down a little bit. Do it gentle. You always have one hand to support the spike. The other hand trying to do what you're doing. Because now with a wire, I could go up, I could go down. Right? Now it's kind of more facing you. The presentation is everything for me. Now we have another one. This one I'll just do wire. Okay. This one I could do a hook or I could do... I think I'll just do a twisty. I like to get my spike off the leaf, you know? And some of them are really laying right on top and I've seen some very creative way people are doing it with cork, with my packing peanuts and I've seen packing peanuts and sticker. I mean, whatever works, but packing peanuts not really that attractive. So just use a little wire to prop it up. And then when you go when you go to water your plant, you're not going to wet the spike. For the ladies that have long nails, try not to dig into the spike. <laughs> like Jamie's having issues today. Okay, so there we go. We have this off. It's going to flower. Most likely it's going to hit this, but this flower is fading. You can always separate a little bit. You can bend the, bend the wire. Remember, Gia's eyes is going like, whoa. <laughs> Remember, you, you have two hands for a reason, okay? The <laughs> other hand should not be scratching your head or your butt. Sorry. That, that was kind of rude. <laughs> so do, do what I'm doing. You hold the spike. You got your wire on there. And you do a gentle tug. And then now the spike is going where you, where it wants to go, right? Is that a spike coming out the back? What? Hey? What's coming out the back? Oh, um, is that a spike? Is that a spike? Yeah, this is a spike. Oh, another spike. Yeah, this is a secondary spike. Now, of course, you want to take this off. Oh, okay. so that yeah. Some, somehow, um, it had started with a bamboo, and then Brian was trying to spiking and I took it away. I said, here, let me have another plant for me to spike. I'm trying to teach about bamboo today. Here again, we could do bamboo, but I think this one is such a weak spike. It's still brand new. I don't want it to really damage it. So here's, here's another one. Oh, wow. This one smells great. Okay. Any questions? Let's do a path. Today we're going to do a lot of just different, different organs. And always make sure you have a solid base to use. It'd be great if you get a lazy Susan. I love these. It's not twirling as well because I have on the mat. So Lady Slipper, it's a little bit more different. So the lady slipper, you have more of a stamp, and usually the the face is facing down like the calea. I 
usually cut a little bit bigger piece. And with Lady Slipper, you don't want to just go fold in half and choke. Usually we want to do a crisscross. And usually I put it right, um, I don't even know what you call it, right where the stem is because you want it to lift the flower up, right? If you do it here, you really can't control the flower. So I'm trying to do it as tall as I can. Then you do a crisscross across, but you're leaving room here because you don't want to choke. Can you say a little bit better what crisscross is? Crisscross is when I, once here's a stem, you pull it through and you cross the twist tie. That's called a crisscross. Um, so you, when you hold, you're going to do the same way you're doing the Fela. You're going to hold the flower up because you want to know where the flower should be. Because you don't want it to keep doing this until you, you do it right. By that time, you bruise the flower. When you do a crisscross, remember, it has to be loose. Here, Gia. It has to be loose. <laughs> so when you hold it, you want to have space from the flower to the spike. And I'm trying to be stanchy so I didn't cut it long enough. But anyway, instead of, instead of twist it, I just fold it to the spike. See, now the flower is, is perfectly up. But now you see this part. I try to spike it as tall as I can to the top. You don't want to go all the way to the top. That flower will come right off. But in order to face the flower up, this has to be as tall as you can get. And then see how much room I give the flower to the bamboo? It has room to breathe. You're not choking it, you know. You are in a chokehold. Uh, you don't need to do a chokehold on your path. You know how I feel when you wear a chokehold. And then once you're done, you get to move this up as high as you can, right? And then with path, you do the top first, and then you come and do the bottom. And do you wait till the flowers open for sure, or can you do it sooner? Um, I usually let it go even two thirds open is fine. I don't want to go it when it's all open or when it's too tight and um, the stem has not developed, the whole the whole path is not developed. And there's several ways to do a twist tie. You could do a roll or you could do a, a tie. It's up to your preference. There's really no right and wrong way to do it. Just do it in the way you don't break anything. But I'm here to teach you the basic and you could master your own plan or show me how you do it. Maybe we can learn from each other. But I just been doing this for 30 some years. So here we go. I don't have the right tool, but usually we'll, yeah, don't try to be using tools that are not usable because that's how I got my carpal tunnel. And it, that leads to the whole shoulder problem, the whole, everything. I'm in pain all day long, so. Anyway, so, um, Daddy got me these lock cutter for for um, cutting, but for this plant, you can't use a lock cutter. It's so big, you might end up tilting the plant. Yeah. Um, I, my girlfriend in Canada bought me a really good clipper from Germany, which I think was $150, but I've been using it for 15 years, you know, till the stuff. Anybody steal it, loses it, you're fired, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, it's a little hand tool like this. I don't have it with me. Um, it should just snap right off. But when you have a bigger plan, you got two people holding, use the lock cutter of the wire. Some of my design um, sticks are like four of these wired together on the thing than those. I have to use a lock cutter, but when I'm in a hurry at the shop, I usually do it by myself. I put the stamina up on my legs and I wonder why I have a bruise on my thigh and my legs, you know, but that's from that. You don't, <laughs> you don't have time to be looking for help when you're at work. Today we're gonna do spiking. Just when you think I have nothing more to offer on spiking, here I come with another. <laughs> Can somebody ask me a question? Because I'm really bored talking to myself. What's the name of that path you just did? Uh, it's a Madia. Does that number? Uh, I will give no, it to you. Okay. It's on my jumper. It's on my jumper. The name is on my jumper. Yeah, Roger. There's a name. On That's it. what they wanted to know. Oh. Can you tell me? Calf Ontario Jewel. Ontario Jewel. I, don't have I will have two of those on jumper. Um, two double spikes on jumper today. And I'm drinking uh, passion fruit. Eric was 
um, growing passion fruit in his yard. So instead of lemon, I put passion fruit in my drink. And they wanted to know, is that the wire that you normally sell? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. you like the taste of passion What, hey? you like the taste of passion fruit? I like the taste of anything that's not pure water sometimes. Really? Uh, <laughs> Lemon, no. oranges. It's an acquired taste. Passion fruit? Yeah. When you put in this much water, it's more like uh, sour. Okay. Can you can you read the number? Oh, I'm sorry. A as an apple, 000173. And I forgot, I think it was Donna that made me start bundling this. <laughs> so, I think it's helping a lot of people. I think Linda, Linda Lee Earl. Earl did a great spiking the other day mm -hmm. and um, on her technique on why she learned from me and I was very pleased and that we're actually helping. Anyway, here's the Catalea. Again, where do you start spiking? I'm going to work with my flower. It smells great. Okay, it's so huge. it's huge. Now, this one hasn't really completely flower and GA was asking when do you spike? You know, you spike when you can get to it because otherwise sometimes the Catalea gets so heavy and they'll break on its own. So, uh, obviously you cannot use wire. That's not gonna hold it, unless you got thick wire that I was using for the path. So, again, remember, I mean, you could clean the sheets off and everything, but it's up to you. The spike, it's like your tag on your shirt. It's always behind you. You don't wanna put this in front of you because it blocked the visual of, you know, the orchid. So, you, you always wanna put it right behind it. Again, I tried to twirl. And then we're working with, with um, bark today. So it's right behind it. So when you're visual, you're not gonna see the bamboo, right? So you're not, you don't wanna go to a, a movie and then you got a pole right in front of you, you're gonna have to do this kind of thing. <laughs> Again, these wire, I think it's on mine. These wires on mine too. So here you go. You're gonna spike this. Usually I spike it where where the leaf is coming out of. And this one, you don't have to do the crisscross, you just tie as you as you can. With the Calais, you gotta do your base first. If you're not anchor on the base, you can't get to the top, okay? That's very, very important. You don't wanna do like what I did with the path, start at the top and then work my way down. Bam, this will be snap in no time, okay? A lot of people will do one on the base and then do another stem. Then again, for me, that's way too many bamboo. It's, number one, it's too costly. Number two, it's kind of um, takes away from the beauty of the flower. A lot of time, people like to take the sheet off and try to get it in. I don't. I I don't want to chance it because it's really Norman does. <laughs> okay. And the secret is Norman don't really spike much. He just walks around, open his mouth, and go, can you guys get that spike? I can bet you you haven't spiked as much as I have, Norm. The big boss never do any work. You know that. <laughs> Unlike this one. Anyway, I didn't cut that long enough, so I'm going to just do it with it. This is called a sheet. Okay, the the pal, I mean, the calla, the buds is always in this sheet, and if you catch tell if there have flowers or not you can always lift it up you can always see if there's flowers spike in there and don't try to open it up and don't try to help them because you're gonna, gonna get water in there and then the flowers gonna get it the buds will get all rotted okay don't we don't like you helping okay just leave everything alone let nature take its course so I think we're just gonna do this but this is a third twisty I tied it cut is not long enough so I'm gonna do that I twist it. See, but I'm not choking it. I'm holding it by the sheet. There's still lots of space. And I'm going to just twirl this onto my bamboo. And then I'm already securing my flower. Right? So, so if you... You, you if, could cut the green sheet if you wanted to. I wouldn't. Because I would only think I would cut it if it's dry. Well, the one that's dry that is dead. I'm talking one that everything is fresh and alive. If you cut that, it's the same as the Calia flower. It's so brittle, hmm. right? Remember, I, I snapped it off already, but not completely, so I was salvaging it with a tape. Floral tape will be better than the tape we have. So he would cut it, though. The green one. Norman would. 
Um, no Norman wouldn't do any of that. He'll just say, this is for display. Can you just make it pretty? Oh. That's how Norman does it. So, again, these are not fully flowered yet, but yet I'm trying to help it. Because then I'm worried about if you're going to take it to orchid show, here's the car, you're bouncing it. Mm. This spike is going to gonna drop. For me to move it to my living room, no problem. But it, a lot of people like to move things around when they're, they're in spike. They're like, try, oh, let's move it away from the sun. And then the whole flowers are confused which way it's flowering. And the stem gets weak sometimes because you're moving it from high light to low light to medium light to wherever you want it to be. By that time, the plant is pretty tired. So I'm just going to help it along. Here I go. I have this gauging problem today. Here we go. I'm just going to do a little loop. I'm going to go fishing, fish my, fish my flowers up, right? I'm just going to gently tie it. And then I'm going to just gently twirl this. And we just help to face it. And then still give it room to open, right? Because right now it's not open yet. If it's all fully open, then I already, already know my spacing. But right now, it's gonna, I leave room for it to flatten out a little bit. Am I completely happy with this? No, not today. Um, I would normally wire it like I'm doing with a Calia. But once, when it's fully open, I might loosen up the, um, the twist tie and then it'll hold itself. Right now, I just wanna make sure it doesn't like just droop and, and break off by itself. Normally, and I'm not 100% on my game today. I, w I would do this. I mean, I, get, I could still do this. Here, I'll do it. I already embarrassed myself breaking one. Here we go. I'm glad I missed that. I, it didn't completely break, so I was teaching you what to do when you didn't completely break it. <laughs> huh? Tape. And if you have floral tape, it's even better because that tape was not good. Okay. Actually, wire would be better, but I don't think I'm in a mood to do that today with my allergy. Mm. I have allergy today. And all the fire. Yeah. Okay, so that's another way to do it is um, just kind of help it along a little bit. You do your little loop. You're going to help pull it up just a little. You loop it into your bamboo voila right and now you're gonna cut the bamboo because you don't need it to have a pole sticking up behind you okay so what do you want to do with this we could either spike some more clean it up but sometimes when I have yellow leaf I usually just cut it off here's a near shear not hurting anything uh, just kind of get rid it's gonna fall off anyway but I have a beautiful presentation I don't need the yellow leaf in front of me okay is that good and it doesn't it's not spiking perfect so you could put more bark behind because it's left it a little bit whoever pot this plant didn't pot it in well is this one of your potting jobs? No. Nope. <laughs> I'm doing it just on the side. We're not even trying to damage any root system. So I don't have a lazy plant that's falling backwards. And then when you get to it, it's filled it up with a little bit more, more bark. Remember that? Oh, I might have Betsy on it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sit and spin with the bezier. I want to be This is my jumper. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to let it go. Obviously, let's spin the bottle. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my jumper. I forgot to spike, so I thought, oh, perfect opportunity. Perfect, perfect. My lovely assistant. Again. And Betsy and Path and stuff always make sure it sits in a little water when you get it. I usually just let it sit in the, in 
a pot or something, a tray, you let it set in this much water. And as an auntie, Auntie Gia, she's not even feeling good either today. Okay, remember, my broken record, everything when you spike, you spike from behind. There's root system in here. And the path doesn't really have a lot of root system, so don't get all nervous. You get it, it's got like three root system in it. Have, don't have that much root system. Actually, a lot of species fail doesn't have a lot of root system. Um, then when when plants came, I think I have one case last week. I saw it on um, the post. The um, I guess it got hot. The plant came in the little stress, and what that person did was repot right away, and that did not help it. When when plant come in a little stress, and if you worry about it, send us a picture. We'll put us on notice. The first thing you do is repot it. That didn't help. You actually helped to kill it. Then you call me and say, your plant came in, stress. Yeah, but that just let it, that's why we said don't repot for 30 days, you know? If it come in really stressed, take a picture, send it to us, we document it, it's in the system. Two weeks later, if it's not surviving or whatever, we have something to work with. But if you're gonna come and tell me, I, it came in stress, I repotted it right away, we're gonna say, hey, you helped it but just relax people let it just chill into your environment and you take a picture if you think it's stressed document it send it to us we have it in the system nobody's going anywhere but the minute you touch the plant the minute you repot it and then the minute you go hang it and then you take a picture of it two days later we didn't send it to you like this right so please don't help us and our customer always right. We have to teach you. We have to teach you to not do anything like if we, we said not to do, you're going to do it, then why should we be responsible? So please help us out. If we have the heat issue, so let it just, you know, acclimate to your temperature and then repotting it and potting in it and doing everything. It's really not helping. And I asked the, I know the person, I asked them to do a house credit just as a courtesy. It's everything is in our system do it once but we don't keep doing it it happens to my house too you know with the fire I take it home I got butt drop but I'm not calling Norman you want me to get off Jeff is like see I'm teaching a lot we got Pal, we got Betsy we got Cali we got Phil Nopsis. hey Norman your director is telling me to get off Put it in straight water or like stone water? Um, if it's just one plant, I just do straight straight water because you could do stone, it doesn't really matter. You keep it in there like all the time permanently? I keep it in there all the time. Oh, yeah. She Jeff is telling me to get out of the stage. I'm not charging all the time for a Come here 15 minutes ago. Yeah. My time is valuable. <laughs> Norman. It's here. We're on camera. I know. I have to be oh, nice. So nice I have to be nice. Yeah, I know. This one I'm working from bottom up. Right? This is ready to go. This Betsia has a side branch another butt and another butt it'll continue going in right now we're looking at four butts already um this is my jumper i have one more you want me to do one more you want me to get off this huh Why not? oh it is i'm done have a good day <laughs> i have one more but i was just teaching too much it's your turn oh, okay. no no it's already 1 30. <gasps> time flies when we're having fun <laughs> wow i'll spike this for mine these are so good Okay, good. Okay. Have a okay. good day, guys. Oh, Roger. Roger. Oh, you're fine. Just put the 817 on this one. I don't want to lose the number. Thank you, honey. You guys got 
Can you look at it? Okay. Uh, what's, hello, my name is Norman Fong. And for those of you who are new, uh, I started a nursery about 1986, almost like yesterday. And so, <laughs> anyway, uh, so today uh, I'm going to talk about, I'm happy to have this species called Stuart Ariana. And how many of you have this, the grow this species before or heard of this species? Anybody? Okay, good. Okay, the the species through the Rihanna, uh, the characteristic is they can be have variegated leaf, okay, or sometimes not much variegated leaf. Okay, uh, the the species itself is from the Philippines, and they're about you know the Philippines have a lot of different uh, region, so most of the most of uh, most of you don't have the experience or access to the species as much. Uh, look at this. Sometimes how to tell just on the leaf. Now this is still there in but it absolutely had no variegated marking at all. Uh, the story was told is it could be from different island of Philippines. Uh, but the characteristic for the still there in is very similar to Another species from Philippines called Shiriana. Uh, they have irrigated leaf. They are all spring bloomer, uh, March April. And but the steward, uh, steward Ariana, unlike Shiriana, which is the pink one, it doesn't have the fragrance. But what it has is a remarkable the spotting. It could be the leper spot on the lip here, or on the petal here. Okay, the one characteristic is they have a lot of flower. So if you are doing uh, purchasing Studeriana, uh, what we're trying to avoid, there is a common name called Studeriana Larkin Valley, AMAOS, which is, is developed in California, in Northern California. Uh, we're trying to avoid any of the line breeding using Stuart and Rina Larkin Valley. Because Larkin Valley, uh, if you remember some of my previous talk, uh, is a kind of inbreeding, okay, before the sighting. So after the, after the 1977, 79, when society composed, we don't get any more species come in. So then what happened is a lot of breeders just keep breeding and breeding. They have like in Valley have beautiful, they were bred to have that leper spot on the flower. A beautiful marking on the flower, on the lip, okay? But it had a ter it had terrible, terrible root system. So even with the Larkin Valley self of it, it's almost so dominant, it had a trace. It have so much inbreeding, almost like the Valencia indigo that we talked about last week, it bred for the beautiful leper spot. But it has so much inbreeding, even the F, the self in of it have a lot of bad root system. So this cross, for example, uh, don't worry, I, I will have a number for you. But uh, it's, it's actually going to release uh, if we show and tell. It's actually, it's, uh, we're using the one called Sogo uh, variety. And that one is actually from the area. It's very compact leaf and the pollen parent is a, a jungle wild species we get from Philippines. So when we put it together, so for example, this has a leaf, a uh, very compact, like the sogo right here. And all these are first bloom seeding, in, incredible. And sometimes, and personally, uh, I'm breeding for, for, I'm actually breeding for spot now. So that day this week, I know my assistant Brian, it's gonna be busy. <laughs> uh, we actually identify some of the we in the silver leaf ish. Okay, I don't this is not the best one, but
But there's one that we is kind of high. I hide it in the pack. I don't want to jam it to accidentally went to a jumper. <laughs> but the the where's but, that one? Huh? Where's that one? No, I'm not gonna show you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you see here, you see the marking on the leaf. Okay, let me have a show you. Show you. Oh, that's the Okay, this is Shuriana. Okay, right hand side, this is Shuriana. This is Studeniana. Okay. It, the, how can I, can I can tell the difference without flower, which is Studeniana and Shuriana. The trick is, the Shuriana always have this stripe. We call in Philippines they call it tiger stripe. The steward area is not striped, it's more broken spot. Okay, so this is how you can tell. Boy, if I ever give a class on orchid species, orchidology, you know we have ID classes. So we put the leaf without flower. And the students are supposed to know what the species. Also yeah, the yeah, underside yeah. of the leaf. Huh? The underside of the leaf too. Yeah. The yeah, underside of the leaf also shirina, but that cannot be. It, it depends on the strength because some shir, This is the samba strand. Samba strand is pink or darker. Uh, some of the lighter shirina had no color at all. So, but the best part, best way to identify them is by the pattern of the spot. Okay. So as you can see. Personally, it really depends on the, what the breeder is looking for. Uh, this is one of them we're gonna keep. This is, I, I like the way the, the crisp paint, really nice white. Just like enough light. So it, okay. So a lot of the uh, student Ariana, what we're looking for. The number one for me is uh, when I go through here and I, I look at this strand and I can I didn't I just told Aaron that hey we should do a sipping because I really like this cross because uh, first of all it's not it's that ha had nothing to do with Larkin Valley okay the second day is since we cross with a wild species you see the root system when we genetically store the area that does not have a, a, a vigorous root system of uh, Shuriana. So, root system, when we do breeding, for me anyway, it's all about the root system. I check everything, not just the flower, you know. Flower is not the all the number one concern for me. It's overall balance, the leaf, and if I'm breeding for the, uh, the marking, uh, the, the leaf shape is very important. If I, there's a, okay. If a, if a leaf is too strike it, Okay, that is no no. But the overall, this is a good candidate for breeding tall branches. If I want something really tall, for sure, for sure in this. Okay, just that the, the I changed the Facebook page for the group. That is this type. This this one here is more resemble of the wild strain. The wild strain had really long arching spray. And all this three here, you notice that very short and compact. This is actually the character of the Sogo, variety Sogo strand, which is from a, a region of Philippines. It's known to have more compact leaf, shorter spike. So this is the one, the type, okay? I would select if I want to breed in miniature or under like <coughs> Windowsill. In fact, a lot of your uh, multi floor, maybe some of the Kamara Pixie, uh, some of the early ones that we in question background. Tiffany Christopher is a marvelous with uh, Stuart Arena. So, right now, with this gym pool, you know what I'm going to do? We actually can recreate some of the hybrid I can cross with Tetrapodus, you know. Uh, that we can recreate with uh, tetrapods. We never had a tetrapod with the color that we have today. In fact, 
1970, when they stopped waiting with uh, Stuart and Rihanna, they don't even have tetrapus at the time. Uh, it was kind of yellowish speciosa. So we're gonna have fun, you know, and you're gonna share the journey with me. Uh, maybe it's three, four years. You're gonna see some of the primary hybrid. We're gonna put away uh, tetrapodus. I uh, have equestrus, uh, the blue one, the one with blue lip. I also had a pure equestrian, the pure alba one. We also had the serapennesis in flower. So this is gonna be fun uh, for us. So this is why I, 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 when I saw this in, in flower, I said, well, we should have a topic because it's, you know, if a species is involved, it's a lot better to show you a spectrum of variety of what it looks like versus just a, a, a picture, okay? So you are really a, a treat. Uh, to see uh, this a uh, variation of, of it. So when you start breeding, what will your next goal be with when you start breeding with this? Okay. What do you want to get? Well, I always, okay, this is why I say I have, uh, you know, it's about my parent, parent, uh, parent parenthood. <laughs> okay, I, the goal, if I have want to do something a little spectacular, showy, okay, which is a line breeding we want, the, that we actually wanted to, uh, a lot of time, we're not even sure if the, this will cross with tetrapers. We're gonna have five color of tetrapers. We don't know what we're gonna take because some of the tetrapers is actually from different region of the island in Indonesia. So the, the only way to tell is, there's a term called shotgun effect. Just, just do it. Just go ball away and see which one it take. Because a lot of time, uh, you know, Brian will tell you some of the, because the diff, even the tetrapod itself, because they're from different island of Indonesia, some of them don't even breed, because they're from different island. So they, they have that kind of genetic uh, separation, uh, which is sometimes to protect them to be, uh, to, for the for purity, for example. Uh, so this is something we are into, we charter into a, a, a territory. Uh, for example, uh, I have some of the Shuriana silver leaf in spike, so I've been waiting. <laughs> so I can remake the Stuart Ariana with Shuriana. But that cross is based not on the flower, but for the foliage only. So for example, this would be a really nice keeper. Not only that it has a nice tall spike, crystal white. Okay. And it's still in a spot, but the leaf, wonderful, wonderful leaf. It's not too long, okay? So and you're gonna try a few things. You're gonna try to breed for show, try to breed for small, yep. multiple goals. And then, yeah, here's another one. This would be a good candidate to cross with Equestria Alba, or the Equestria Sururia, okay? You still have enough marking. So sometimes, so all these are, are have a good characteristic for breeding miniature because we don't want anything really laggy. Nobody have the space now, especially if you go on the light. <laughs> so the new trend now, because this is what a lot of time uh, in the 70s, you know, and, you know, business is before internet. We get, we write, a, we, we write to the nursery, get the printed catalog. Now, when's the last time you see a printed orchid catalog? <laughs> okay, then you wait for them to come in, and the last time because of space, they usually just give you a one picture, and you don't know what the the print looks like. If the might have a one single flower, beautiful, but the leaf can be this big, <laughs> right? Okay, that's normal. So that's the trouble. That type of breeding, we don't know what's going on. We just know what the what we know the flower, but a lot of time the breeder in 60, 70, they don't care because they were breeding for a war for the American Society, for FCC. The leaf structure is a secondary. So I'm coming as a uh, uh, younger generation of orchid breeder and grower. In the, in the, I graduated in the 80 and from Cal Poly Pomona and I have a degree in horticulture. So number one for us, my training back in, in college is always workability, apply, apply. If 
It doesn't make sense you had a big forest like this and only had one, two flower. <laughs> you know, we talk about when we have a greenhouse like this, okay? We we always figure out what is the cost per square feet, okay? Because if if this one square feet, I can put fifteen plant versus only four plant, I will be more in business if I can grow those with fifteen plant, and hopefully kind of give you the yield. The flower quality, the same as the, the one with four print. You, you follow me? So this is why uh, a lot of time uh, people always say, oh, Norman, why you keep this? This is not awardable. And I say, you know what? Award is not important for me. Most of people today does not go planning for a war. They go for yourself, right? You the one that had to live with the orchid. <laughs> Okay, are you going to live with the orchid that we lack in the leaf I think with cabbage leaf? No, <laughs> nobody have it. Uh, unless you're in Florida, you can. You don't mind. You can put it outside of, in Florida. You know, I love Florida. And you can put it. You know, you can even mount it on the tree. You know, it's wonderful, wonderful. Uh, for a different purpose. But I send it, uh, Shuriana, at Florida Orchid Show. But 20 years ago, one of the exhibitor had it mounted and have about, must be about four, five hundred flowers. He had it for 20 years. So this is, this is wonderful. Uh, I would uh, always keep, uh, if you wrote something like this, if you're in South Florida, Florida, you can do it outside. Always mount it because you have, you have a lot of moisture. But um, in the greenhouse or under light, uh, I would prefer to go in the pot. Uh, whether it's moss or you can hybrid a moss and bark, whatever. But the studeriana is very the, the root area is very sensitive to salt, even more than shuriana. Uh, I don't know why, but just my own uh, is, uh, experiment. So a lot of time, and uh, as I said before, that we all uh, once a month in our nursery, we uh, one week whether they, they need it or not water we do it what we call it. and we do it by hand we, there's no speaker head here we do it by hand we do it twice uh we call it double water okay you water the plant once okay and this is why a lot of time we we don't we, we never fill the pot all the way to the rim we always leave about one inches so you the first watering you fill out the, the rim you keep moving up then when you come back whether it's a moss if it's a moss by then you come back, it will be all penetrating out. So the second water is what we call leaching. You wash the second water because the first water is already losing all the potty media. So the second water is going to wash out any of the excess salt that the plant did not use the week before or the week before. And this is the way that you can avoid any of the tip burn, the salt deposit. And also because the, the fertilizer we have is very impure, very pure, so very refined. So that helps also. This is why I I, I, get, I formulate my own fertilizer. All right. And how are we doing so far? Good. And another, again, Stuart Ariana is from Philippines. They do not mind the heat. Okay. This batch is, I, I purposely uh, regulated, uh, do a lot of many, uh, Temperature regulation to force them to flower in the middle of summer, so I can I can flower I can make cross with the equestrian sururia, which only flower in the summertime. And I'm gonna have some of the, the new variegated uh, pochurima that I show you lot. The variegated leaf, I'm very excited. They are I, I have some in bud, then I can make cross it with. So this is why, otherwise, all these are flowering in the springtime. Okay, but it's very important I make crosses with the summer bloomer, the species. So that's another goal I'm making. I'm breeding something for the summer bloomer. Something that is not your spring bloomer. And so making matching the spring, the regular March and the July. Then we're gonna have something more May, July, it's more summer-ish. So it's fun. And because they're from sea, so they're gonna have variation. 
So I think this is very exciting. <laughs> okay, so we actually, you and me, we are doing something together. So eventually, you know, you could, you could, maybe you will remember, this is the episode number 20, 24. Okay, I can say, okay, remember episode 24, <laughs> when we had the 100, 100, 100 episode, we did this, okay? So this is it's very, very excited. I just, look at, I just so excited about this leaf. Look at this, white marking underneath here, okay? And I also came across with the of Amabilis, the Formosana. I am gonna cross with the Amabilis, of uh, Amabilis that had 24 hour fragrance. We'll see what happened because that one has a silver leaf. So even if it didn't have a marking on the leaf, you, I might can create something silver, okay? So that is a sub, the, the contribution of Studeria is, first of all, not just marking on the leaf, it contributes to a lot of flower, okay? So a lot of flower and branching, okay? So this is why there's no accident that the earlier breeder, they do a lot of breeding with white. Uh, they also, this is one of the items we will show, uh, many of you have this, Pinot Cherry. With Studeriana, Shiriana, student and here, and Equestrus, and it still has a variegation and wonderful, wonderful fragrance. So, and the first, you know, the most important part on the Studeriana is the what we call the uh, the French spotted, uh, the earlier French spotted at uh, Rosserol, and it's actually pioneered by the the famous nursery in. Friends called uh, Lacou, or one of the Lacou family, uh, Marcel Lacou. And I remember back in night early, the day 80 or early 70, Lacou went to America and it was a sensation. It was an Eastern Orchid Congress. Some of you might remember Eastern Orchid Congress in New York. Okay. And he opened the box and then had one flower. Very similar to this, not even as pretty as this. It was the most amazing thing. It was white with spot like this. And it was it was a French, what we call French, that's why they call it French spotted. So you got any of the any of the orchid now, you have the spotted. Okay. Even though this is the Harlequin uh, spotted, which I can hear, but they also have this in the background. Another one. Novelty. Don't worry about the number. This will be show you. So this is one of those Ishin orchid. A lot of this spotting. It's not just the Amoriensis, but the branching, the spotting, is actually all from Studeriana. Okay. And then one about that thing about Studeriana is it keep the leaf very very compact and the, I, the genetically the leaf have this what we call a 45 degree okay very very manageable okay. right this is for sure same chrome you see the effect on the steward area three spikes it may not have branches but three spikes it it give a lot of flower. Now, with a combination of the the novelty, good summer, and good summer boomer. Okay. So, you see, they don't have a lot of uh, the French spot in flower because it's springtime. They all most are spring boomer. But if you see any of this candy stripe spot in here. Okay, some of you, some of you are in the judging program or student judge on the species test. You know, right? it, like we usually try to show the, the, we put one flower and they say, what species contribute to the spotting in this flower? So you, you the number one, you got to able to it all had you. If you miss mentions to the Rihanna, you're not gonna pass. <laughs> okay, so this is why species is important. So I think, uh, uh, as uh, a week goes along, uh, any of the species in happy in flower, I will use that as a topic 
and to if if everybody like this format let me know if you don't like it let me know too but it's it's wonderful to have this happen to be flower uh right now so so again everything on studeria is very similar to any of your fan analysis they like the heat if you put it outside which is fine uh like new york if it go, they don't have to be cold feet. Okay, if, if the night temperature is going to go below 55, you got to put them in. Now. Okay, you can actually leave it there outdoor down to 58, 55 for two weeks and then put it in the house. And that will, that will guarantee you have a flower spike right away. That's how you trick them to flower. Uh -huh. And that's how I trick them to flower in, uh, to extend a spike in the middle of August. Okay, other than that, they also make sure, make sure their root system is very, one of the species very sensitive to root, uh, the uh, salt, okay? So always make sure you extra water. If you're not sure, do we need to water this or not? Go ahead, okay? Because their root system is very, it's not as thick or fat as some of the hybrid, like big white. They're very smaller, okay? All right. Other than that, just the, the salt build up, avoid the cold night temperature. They don't mind the heat. And then also less light versus some of the species like the Dominiana, Conisari from Thailand, or the solid green one, almost a succulent leaf. Any of the variegated leaf, you want to put in shade here, but they're not in flower here, not right now, okay? so. If you go under, under uh, by the window, put it back. Put it back. You can always get it more light uh, closer to the window when when it's in the fall or in the winter. And the light intensity is not as strong. Okay, but if you go under light, no problem. If you go under light, okay, you want to put it not right in the center of the light, maybe toward the edge. Okay. Other than that, that's it. Make it simple. All right. How are we doing? Am I make it too simple for everybody? It's actually very easy. You know, just make sure you buy uh, from a good uh, source and a book. You always ask the vendor, you know, the parents. Yeah, because not every student are created equal. Just like when you buy, uh, Jamie went to buy her teacup dog. <laughs> she went to the best breeder. Okay. You know, look, orchid breeding is not like, it's just like daylight like entry, you know, garbage in, garbage out, okay? Uh, and if you're going to spend the time, the effort, you might as well get the best one, okay? And always buy, uh, because still there, you know, any of the variegated leaf, uh, do not buy the tiny little two inch pot or I want to call eyelash side. <laughs> always try to buy them mature side or booming size as possible. Believe me, it's worth the extra $10 or $15 because time is money. Something like this, this is about four years old for the first book. Because any of the variegated leaves, because they have less chlorophyll, they could be slower. Okay, so that's a that's rule of thumb. With anything variegated, always buy the biggest one because when they are, they are more mature, their print are more forgiving. Okay. If you, uh, you know, if you're a beginner, you, uh, you, do, you, you forgot the water, <laughs> or you got on vacation, uh, and you hear caretaker uh, either too over water or under water. So when the print are more uh, mature, they are more forgiving. All right, are we okay? Good. Anybody, any question before I move on? All right. Yes. Can I ask you a question? A couple of weeks ago, you were going to tell us how to raise our baby voodoos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, mine's already dropped a couple of leaves, and I'm getting scared because there's only two left. <laughs> yes. Okay. Remember the, the voodoo magic one? Okay. It's in the voodoo. voodoo. How many of I think many of you have voodoo? Yeah. The voodoo is a breeding from the miniature. Okay. Uh, is right now is in the two inch pot, very really tiny pot. Do not repot them yet. Do not because you know why? The fall is coming. For some of for some of you, oh, it's already fall. 
we still have long day. Uh, it's getting cold. Day length is getting shorter. So I will leave it in the same side of the palm. Okay, you don't want to repot that one until next April or May when you see the coming. So leave it in the same size. Okay, now remember, smaller the palm, the faster they dry out. So keep an eye on it, don't let them dry out. That's all. Okay, <laughs> so leave it at the same part. So I will remind people by next April, the time to repot the voodoo. Okay, uh, how many of you have voodoo? Some people have voodoo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, amazing plant. It had, it's one of the, one of those plants that when I saw, there a few plants I said, oh my God, this is it. When I saw that in Thai, my last trip to Taiwan, actually this March in April, in March in Taiwan for the World Orchid Show, and I visited this breeder, and he's, he's, he said, well, they're not released yet. And I said, well, not for me. <laughs> I said, you know, I don't take no for answer. I'm not going to leave here until you tell me. But it's only 1.5. I don't care. I want it. <coughs> that's how, that's how stubborn sometimes, because I know it, but because if it wait until the 2.5, Sometimes this guy is so funny because, and I said, I want to put deposit money. I go, I pay for it. No, I don't want it. Because <laughs> if you don't pay for it, if you sell it, you know. So a lot of times what happened is that that's a lot of time, that's how I, that's how I grabbed the, on the first 100 plant or 100 plant. Yeah. It was so small. I had the air shipping in this January. <laughs> in, in January by air. And I lost about maybe 10%. Oh, wow. And I don't want to release it. People keep asking, when are they going to release it? And I thought it grow faster than that. No, they're slower because they're genetic. Uh, they, have, they have the Fernanda Jagatia. Like, remember the Jagatia, such an estimation? Uh, can you pull the Jagatia? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, remember two several weeks ago, we said Jagatia Alba? Guess what? It's still not open yet. They're very slow, okay, but they're very nice. They very, they are slower, but the genetic of them are just wonderful. So this is the, the that one. You just leave it the same size apart and repot it this way. And remember, they're two inch pot. They two inch dry out faster than some of the the bigger pot. The, if it's what this is true, whether it's moss or bark, okay. The bigger the pot, the slower they dry out. Okay, so I, I usually what we do is I put all the two inch together. So when you in the middle of the week, you always check that the one smaller can draw faster. And then put all the one in the moss in one area. Because guess what? Those are the ones that are gonna be dry out slower in, in the big pot. If you have if you that's why a lot of time people they go I'm hundred percent moss here because I'm in California, I'm really dry here. So and I hang water. So they, they save a lot of labor for us here. And also because we're so dry here, uh, we don't they don't dry out as much. So when you got the moss from, from me, if you're not repotting them yet, make sure you put all the moss in, in one area. The one, the bark mix in one area, separate it. You never want to put bark and moss together because the one that moss going to be on the uh, really dry out, might be fine for them, but the moss will be go over water. And that's how they got in trouble. Make sure you separate it, okay? You don't have layer in moss? Yes. Yes. Uh, in fact, I have carrier in moss, outdoor. And that I mentioned we have an experiment since March, 118 degree. But with, with the help of Mega Dry, I do it twice a week. And they actually help with the heat stress. But with orchid in the moss, Outdoor, I treat it in the calorie. I even have fan analysis outdoor. Wow. Shadier. Are you misting those plants outside? Yes. Yeah. But, but I don't do cut to do it every day because we're so busy. But but the but mainly is to see the stress. It's a stress test. I make it right. But the the moss, uh, the moss outdoor. If you want to try this. The moss generally is gonna keep the root above 15 degrees cooler. So this is true if you want to mount orchid on the tree. Always use a good quality, uh, not the one that use for house plant, you know, for annual basket. They're gonna rise this month. 
use of good orchid mount and mounted on the tree. I have I have the ANSAP mounted with a good uh, cherry mask but for the last 10 years I'm still there. Yeah. And the, the, the mask is gonna keep the root about 10 15 degrees uh, cooler. So it's actually uh if it maximum at 115, they might be cooler down there. And then also for there's a mask drawing up. It create a microclimate, it extra moisture for them. Okay, so if you want to try orchid outdoor, I do recommend uh, try the uh, go in the field mask. You can mix it up with some uh, uh, bamboo charcoal we have, or put it in the clay pot so they don't tip over if it has high wind. Okay, are we ready for the show and tell? Okay, great. Brian, can you put it put this away? So the I'm going to start with this two here. Uh, this is the one I showed you earlier. Okay, this is a uh, pinon cherry. Have the it's amazing fragrance. Have the stew Daniela and the fine spot from stew Daniela. Okay, many of you use this. Wonderful. This is just a, a first bloom. Not bad for the summertime with the heat. Okay, they they can flower again or you can cut them. Cut, cut them out, the branching. The springtime is when they're gonna be spectacular. Okay, so it's it's amazing fragrance and wonderful for on the light. And this, while we at the subject of the variegated, I I do, do not have this for a long time. This is Serapanensis, a wonderful, wonderful miniature variegated leaf. Uh, right, uh, Roger. Can, you, can I have that very good that set up in this? Yeah. This is Jamie Jumper. You see here? This is the booming size. This is the flower of Serapanensis. Isn't it wonderful? It's a miniature, and this is the only species that have flowers 360 degrees. Almost a hydrangeas. Okay. So this is booming size. Some okay. So if you don't have this one here, or if you don't have this, this is a, a must for the series collection. And wonderful to put it on the uh, basket like this. Put it in here. And that way, I love this one here, because that way, the one like this, you can just put one here. Stick it here, and the brass box is gonna make, make a contrast with the leaf, okay. So this is it. We're ready for the next one. Okay. Okay. And we have some early Shuriana. I mean, this is the Shuriana from the Samba, Samba region of the Philippines. Okay. Uh, NF203. All four, and they are start just spiking right now. It's one. Look at the root system. This is why I say the Shuriana root system is different than Studeriana. It's always fatter. Okay, so this is why uh, Studeriana is uh, very very doable. You know, not as not as salt sensitive as Studeriana, and the Shuriana and the hybrid are really really robust grower. Look at this. So this is from Samba region, and this is the uh, not the inbreed hybrid. This is why it's had so much uh, species vigors. Look at the leaf. I can tell this is gonna be a nice uh, dark flower. And the Samba re region is known for the size of the flower. They're not small flower, they're big, okay? Uh, we're gonna have some for path grower. This is what Hany Eye, one of those uh, Harold, Dr. Harold Cooper would love to breed this with Michael Mini. And this is mature size. They have flowers from here before, more here, and they always constant, almost constant in flower because they always flower from the new growth here. So a plant like this is a full mature size in just two and a half inch pot. Okay, so this is the cutest uh, species and quite rare before, but now we do it by seed. 
and it's a wonderful, wonderful plant to have. Okay, perfect timing for the Halloween coming up. And here's another species called Happy Pen Honey Yenum. Uh, it's a wonderful strand. Uh, very similar to Laurier, but it's more striped and spot. So you can check out the check out the full uh, the picture on the website. Uh, wonderful strand. Uh, this is from Bear Orchid, and I think we have less than. 15 print. So if you like something uh, for the multi floor, uh, don't don't wait on this one. Uh, it should be uh, it should be flowered this coming spring. They are sp very good spring bloomer, and it's multiple late date and it's ready to go to a bigger top. Okay. The folks want to know the number on the black pots. Oh, okay. Black I will have Brian look at Brian. Can you look at the, the number for the black pot? Guess what? The Batman return. Batman! <laughs> Yay, Batman! Okay, so we have uh, two, three sides. We have three sides, and this is the biggest one, okay? Uh, Batman is one of the, my perennial favorite by our customer. And uh, Sunny Say, Sunny, our, one of our customers, Sunny Say is frozen in time. The, I think the individual flower lasts over what, six months. Eight months. My Eight, months Eight months for Jeff. No problem. Well, Jeff grow on the light, so he's, he's wonderful growing. So this is it. Uh, short spike, and the flower lasts forever. It's, it's a polaric. It's wonderful. And guess what? This one has Studeria in the background. You see the spot here? That is from Studeria. But. The species that Emboriensis, uh, Venosa, Dominant, and they keep it short. And they also have a cushion. And the nice thing about Batman, it never cut off the spike. It keep booming. So now it has three sizes. Uh, this is the, we have a small number of the biggest one. This is the big one, okay? And it should, by next spring, you're gonna have another spike. So now you're gonna have a, and then by next spring, you're gonna have a bouquet of flowers. So this is actually the second time they flower. We have a fresh in the springtime earlier, and now it's growing again. <laughs> Twelve, twice a year. You don't have to do anything to it. Uh, it's just very durable plant. Okay. This is quite a treasure. This is Violacea alba, and a very, very good strand of Violacea alba. <laughs> what happened? You did that. You did that. Okay. Uh, well, let's see how this, this strand uh, is originally from Michael, um, Malaysia, and then Malaysia. So, a good friend of mine, uh, my, 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 my model. And look how wonderful. So, this is the line breeding. Uh, we're trying to increase this, the flower spike. And the, it might, the nice thing about Valencia uh, Alba is they smaller than Bonina Alba. Just like Valencia Indigo last week. So if you go on a light or windowsill, Valencia Alba is a good choice. It look it might look small, but the print this is about four years old. Yeah, but they don't this this particular strand does not get big at all. So it's a wonderful hand. Uh, uh, last time we have uh, we should have sold out of this by another couple couple of months. Same time. Very scented, highly scented, and again, do not cut off the spike, they'll keep booming. Even the back of the flower has alba and green, so it's pretty green without flower in the back of the flower. Okay. Okay, this is a treasure. This is a coronary, the species. Okay. Uh, this is not the four end that we showed before. Uh, this is Corin Surrey, the channel chara, uh, the, the red one of red diamond. Okay, so if you don't have the speed, the, this is the two end form. Okay, two end uh, is a smaller flower, but give you a lot of flowers, so it, and also very compact. And next to it, it's actually brief on this. This is Corin Surrey. We 
choppers. Okay, so this is not the his name is name uh, mean Estrada. It's not the Valentina, the other the reddish one, but this is using the corn syrup and the choppers. Uh, so corn syrup that we use is not the red one. It was the yellow one, a brown one they have. So this number here is gonna give you more of the yellow, reddish tone to orange, more sunset tone. I like this. This is so. This is another option than Valen, the newer one than Valentina. Goes just like Valentina, except you get a lot of the spotting. The spotting is not busy. The spotting is genetic from Conisseri, the yellow form. Okay, so if you see the spotting, don't worry. It's just that some of us have freckle. <laughs> it's actually make the print very very ornamental, especially if you give them a lot of light. So so this strand here. It's wonderful. We have, it's a newest strain we have. It's wonderful for the fall and the Halloween coming up because it's a lot of orange tone to it. So if you have Valentina, this will be a good addition, a, a complement color. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Wow. Never seen before. And a two sixty four two. This is remake. And I think this is almost like as good as my FCC, the Banana Sururia. Okay, this is my line breeding. Okay. This one's on the website. It's not on the website? Okay. Well, we, after this, we'll make sure to show it. You see, we always show it before we release it. We always let this group know first. So, first come, first serve, we always put a big one. The nice about this crown, this strand is, you see how compact? Okay, some of them you might see some of the valleys you have inbreeding in, in Florida that like, do not flower into this big. No, garbage, that's too old. The new trend is because this all been back cross with the wild species. So, what we're trying to do is smoke, uh, straining the side. It had two spikes. Look at this. Okay, so this is what I mean that my breeding goal is we don't have the space for square feet. We're trying to maximize. The number of print because we're paying the same money for it, the heating bill and air bill. And frankly, nobody has the time to or space to go the print that much anymore. So, if you want a very good Sururia, okay, uh, I'm, after this, I'm gonna have Brian tell the to Eric to release 262. Look out, okay. I think several one of you have post picture of this one here. This is Pokra cross rivales indigo, and it's called okay. So remember this one here. We have this one. If you don't have this one here yet, I think many of you have post a picture. Wonderful, wonderful. Waxy flower, okay. All right. All right, and look at it. They just three, two, three spike. They just love to love the flower, and that's because the pole crop we use is a wonderful wild strain. Okay, not the man-made inbreeding pole crop. Just is breed for the one for the big flower. The size is not that important for us. For me. It's all about how free flowering, the number of flower and number of spike. Okay, so if you don't have this one here yet, get it because I think they still have a special for two for the smaller size. But it's a wonderful plant and it keep booming. Right. This cross has been booming since Valentine's Day. <laughs> all right, Brian gave us some calorie. All right. For now, the fall is coming. And so a lot of our four carrier coming. Oh, this is wonderful. This is green. I don't have a far off picture yet, but uh, Crystal is going to do a re recap with a link. And this is a wonderful green. The older green is kind of be some of them can be really big. No, this is wonderful. It has back cross to Jack and T. Uh, Boss of all of Dipiana. So Dipiana keep the print size down, but. These are fat suitable. This is actually perfect stage to ship. Okay, 
Look how wonderful. This is why I, I saw problem I make a dry. It got too short this spring. I have and my fertilizer is for two shoot at a time. But when this one is in flower, guess what? It's combination of Megatron and Norman Sorky flu. And this is spike coming up. You are getting two spike at a time, but in about one month apart. All right, so this will be flower for Halloween. This one here will be for Thanksgiving. Voila. <laughs> Another good spring and fall brimmer. The flower is small on this one, but they are huge in the in the uh, springtime. This is the King Kong. They are huge in the springtime. But this is the first flower. I love about this variety called King Kong. Okay, many of you grow Carolia. I love the way the Carolia very disciplined. Okay, I grow a lot of Carolia in. In the 80s, when I was taking care of the Raymond Burke Collection School, some of the older generation, the the, the plant is just out disciplined. They just they will they will cut flower strand. Okay, they will breathe for cut flower. The plant can be this tall and just over that, all over map. This is the one of the, the newer generation for the 90 for for the for the for 21st century. Okay, discipline. Right. And then even even if I don't stake it, it's still very nice because a lot of time we just don't have a power manpower to, to stake it. Okay, so it's a nice spring and fall bloomer. If you like fall blooming, Calaria, this is it. Can you smell it? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and smell it. Okay, All right? Any more? Oh, oh wow! Oh wow! That's beautiful. Very fragrant. Yes, yeah. amazing. Leave it there. All right. Oh, I can take it home. Thank you, Thank <laughs> oh, you sure. very much. It's jumping. It's a jumper. It's a jumper. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, oh, this is the Valencia of Bonina, Motonoria. This is the the wild strand, the one we call arresting form. Okay, we still have a few of this. They are coming to spike now. Okay, what I like about this, this is the wild strand. Okay, they're not. In the old days, the, the judges or the breeder in the in the city, they overlooked this because they are kind of star shaped, but they're very very charming. They're not a big full fat for judging, but this is the one that will, I call growth. If you are purist, if you want a close to jungle species as possible, this is it. Compact leaf. Uh, they are spiking, and the, look how wonderful they they actually have. Longer arching spike than the regular big fat uh, banana, and this is coming from a very uh, particular area. The last time this strand had been seen a water in America is 1979 Dallas, Texas. So it took me another uh, actually the one first one person to brought it back to America to um, see about three four years ago. So this is it. Uh, if you like my work you know if you think I'm going to support my effort to reintroduce a species try this one okay and here is not a stranger I love how this is a hybrid okay it it's actually ha is a, a great novelty we embrace it with Tiffany Christopher so this actually have believe it or not Tiffany Christopher is one for us sure yeah so this is still a baby print Okay, but it had a waxy substance, just like uh, cymbidium or any of your biodilacia all by the background. But look how wonderful the leaf. Okay, so this is actually a very nice bridge over of the novelty using the studentia. So it can give you a lot of flower. This is the first bloom. And now, and they also very fragrance. Oh. Okay. Wow. 
This is the species. Which one? Which this? Oh, okay. This is the num for those. This is the number of part. The, the the A angle part. This is the number. I think we showed this before. I wish we, we should leave this permanent here. If some of you belong in Feng Shui, this is specially designed uh, by my friend. It's A angle. A in uh, Oriental, it means good luck. So if, if, if you belong in Feng Shui, it will be a good, good all A angle. But I love this one, it's look at the number of the, the spike. Good trenches. So especially if you, if you go under light or windowsill, the black will absorb heat for you. So if it's very important if you are on a windowsill, sometimes the window may be cold. The sun comes in, the, the up black will absorb and make everything pretty. Okay. So this is actually will support any of the, the 2.8 or 2 or 3 inch part. Very versatile. I have some, they're awesome. They're awesome. They, they, they're awesome. If you go on the light, is pre presentation is everything. Okay. This species, the alba form. Okay, if you guys are waiting, and the sunny has one coming to flower. I have about less than 12 left. If you are still, and this is the stage, they are all ready. It's amazing. Okay. Put another car, Flava. Wow. I think we should cross with our Tetrapus Alba right now. Right, Brian? Cross with Tetrapus Alba or Tetrapus Green. Okay. Okay. But this is the one. I just take this right out of outdoor. Okay. This is the one. Went through the, the, uh, the stress test. Outdoor, mega dry survive well actually it's not just survive but forest 110 degrees. 110 degree in southern california for and weeks, it's smart right? for two weeks and smart it was so smoky in a smart resistant it did not <laughs> look at this i just love this one so if you i'm convinced this is wonderful uh jaho delight if you don't have this one if you like to be cool out, anything outdoor this is it and i either and the best part is, is a sequential flower. They they flower on all spike, and any of this all spike, they can rebloom on the same can. So the more can, the better. All right. So how wonderful! Right. Look at the root. With the dendrobium like that, if you wanted to try to use cakey paste, where would you put it? Uh, cakey paste on this type. This is not as dominant. This this type yeah. is not as easy as a dendrobium that say nobio type. Okay. Uh, it's totally different class of dendrobium. This is the type what we call formosana type. They have hair. They usually are very dominant. Okay. Uh, if you if you if you want to try it, I would say I will put it on top. Oh, okay. okay. This is because that's an epigrowth growing tip. That's the best spot. Okay. But some other dendrobium that nobio. Or the, or the evergreen type, some, you can't even stop it. When it's hot and warm, you cake it anyway. Okay? And, oh, that's the last one. I think so. Alright, we're at to the last two here. Okay, the last two is the spotted. Okay, this is the one I showed you earlier with the Studeria hybrid. So for those of you like spot, this is a wonderful, look at how, this is why you should, I, 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 I put a note, say husky grower or robust grower. This is what I mean, robust. Look at it. <laughs> it is just very uh, vibrant, uh, very live. And look at this Studeria inference, okay? The wonderful, wonderful spot. It's a wonderful fall color. And another, another, we almost, I want to show this one because we almost sold out of this one. All right, if you are, if you like fragrance and the R shape, okay, look how this one, this hybrid has been blooming since March. Okay, uh, if you like the bar, okay, uh, this is the hybrid to have. It's dragon, it's one of those dragon tree eagle hybrid. So, Again, if you're into the, the forest coming, 
This is the collar for you. Oh, can't find it. You can't find it? Okay, then we're going to release it for you. <laughs> I'm going to release this one. Okay, so that will complete this week's task. So there's only about maybe less than 35 of student, uh, sh sh this strand of studentia. Uh, we're going to release all this stage, okay? But so remember the name, studentia. So anytime in the future, you know, if I offer hybrid with studentia that we're going to make today, three years from now, we're going to have maybe you have studentia with tetrapyrus with all kind of crazy combination. Remember, they have beautiful leaf, lots of flower. Okay, so I will see you next week, same time, and hopefully Jamie not gonna overtime. <laughs> All right, I will let you know the topic next week. <laughs>